My people, welcome back to another great episode of You and I Talk Show with your host, Louis Zuacho. And today, get ready to laugh one more time. We have a special comedy episode. My people, stay tuned. Welcome. You and I, you and I, you and I talk. You and I, you and I, you and I talk. You and I, you and I, you and I talk. You and I, you and I, you and I talk. You and I, you and I, you and I talk. You and I, you and I, you and I talk. You and I, you and I, you and I talk. You and I, you and I, you and I talk. Louise Wachu Imana and Wachu Productions. Louise, thank you so much for having me. I'm Justin Nicholas. She said a little bit about myself, guys. When I was a kid, I was really sensitive. You know what I mean? Especially for people who got upset, like my parents. <laughs> So uh, I was a kid who always wanted to go to Disneyland, right? But I knew asking my parents would upset them and make them sad because they couldn't afford to take me, right? So instead of this, I would go to the TV whenever there was a Disneyland commercial and change the channel, right? So my mom wouldn't get all sad, right? And, uh, and I told my mom this story about 20 years later because I thought it was a cute story to tell her, you know what I mean? And she goes, huh, that really made a lot of sense. And I go, what do you mean by that? She goes. Oh no, we could have afforded to take you. We just thought you hated Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm like, are you serious, Mom? Are you serious? Yeah, you used to swear and get all Tourette'sy. We just thought you had a problem. Thanks a lot, Mom. You know what I mean? <laughs> Unbelievable. But uh, yeah, like I said, I'm, uh, I'm uh, from New Westminster and uh, I do a lot of, gro I work in grocery stores a lot and uh, grocery stores are really uh, upsetting me lately. They really get on my nerves. <laughs> So when grocery stores piss me off, I like to do something for me, to pick up my spirits. I like to take the most expensive item I can, uh, can find in the grocery store, and I like to donate it to the food bank <laughs> without paying for it, right? You know what I mean? It's sort of like uh, giving, uh, taking from the rich and giving to the poor sort of situation. And technically, I haven't done anything wrong because I haven't left the grocery store yet, right? It's the perfect crime. It's the perfect. I'm a modern day Robin Hood, if you think about it. I recommend you all try this. It feels great. It feels great. And it's not like you can get in trouble if you get caught or anything like that. You know what I mean? Because you haven't left the store yet. And if the manager tries to take the item back out of the food bank bin, you can just yell at him in front of all the customers and say, hey, this guy's stealing from the food bank. <laughs> Please like that one. All right, good. Uh, a little bit about me, more about me is, uh, is uh, I uh, broke up with my girlfriend a while ago, so I had to do what any man in my situation would do, right? Uh, I signed up for Tinder, right? <laughs> Uh, but uh, I'm not good at Tinder, okay? Uh, girls won't message me back, okay? And uh, girls won't message me back, and I just got out of this relationship, so my self-esteem was at an all-time low, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So I, I decided to do something for me. I decided I just wanted a, a kind word, a pick-me-up, you know? So I signed up for Grindr, <laughs> okay? Now let me explain. Guys on Grindr message you <laughs> right away. <laughs> All right, and it feels good. It feels good to get a kind compliment once in a while, you know what I mean? Like right away my inbox lights up like a Christmas tree or something, right? With a guy just like, hey, hey, what's going on? Want to hang out? Want to exchange massages and watch the game? I'm like 21 kilometers away. The crazy thing about these sites is they tell you how far away you are from all the other lonely, desperate people in Vancouver. It's very safe, right? So I messaged him back. Don't know why I messaged him back. Didn't have to. Didn't have to. But I was like, oh, hey, man. Uh, thanks for the kind words. I uh, really appreciate it. I'm just going to hang out with my cat tonight. Just me and Jeter. Uh, but have a great day. Uh, also, I'm straight. Sorry for leading you on. And he fires right back. He goes, ooh, straight bait, huh? Straight bait, hanging out, just hanging out with your cat. You know that cats are curious, right? I'm going to call you my bi curious little cat. What the hell? <laughs> Uh, no, no, I'm, come on, let's hang out, I'm only 12 kilometers away. Wait, what the hell? <laughs> 10 minutes ago, you were 21 kilometers away from me. What, you like circling my neighborhood like a predatory gay shark or something? Just like, da na da na da na da na da na Thank you, Louise, thank you guys for having me. Oh my goodness, welcome to the show. So I think we'll just take a short break and laugh off that because I can't take it anymore. <laughs> Thank you. And then we'll come back and talk to Justin some more. Thank, Thank you, you for being here.
You and I talk show with Louise Uachu. We love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people. Please contact info at uachu.com to be a guest on the show. My people, we're back. We're sitting down with Justin Nichol, comedian. That was so funny. Thank you very much. It was a little intimidating to be here, but I'm so happy you brought me out. I really you're appreciate still it. alive. Yeah, you're I still made it. Standing. I survived. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, it's you know it's a, it's a little bit intimidating because of all the lights. I mean, yeah. usually in a comedy club, it's actually dark, right? Yeah, it's dark, and there's like uh, you know 150 people, and uh, if you don't uh, do well, well, it doesn't matter. The next guy's up. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you can kind of just sneak out of there, <laughs> your tail between your legs. So. Yeah. But I am extremely happy to be here. This has been an amazing experience. So nice. thank you so much. Thank you so, so I've known you for, for, for a while. We actually met at a comedy class. Yes, at a comedy class. And I'm so happy that you're doing great. You're yeah. out there on the road. Yeah. So what kind of stuff are happening on the road as you're touring? Well, I'm pretty new, uh, as, you, as you mentioned, as far as like the, uh, the I guess the veteran status uh, makes me. But uh, it's been great. It's been a lot of fun. I'm learning from a lot of headliners. And I just started going on the road opening for guys like that. Uh, the road is, um, especially in BC, it's 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 uh, unique. I gotta say, there's not much glamour. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, like the motels that I stay oh, at. Oh, you gotta just, stay at the motel. And it's not hotels, it's <laughs> motels. motels. Like, I think one time I stayed at one called the Fireweed uh -huh. Motel. <laughs> the Fireweed. <laughs> Two things you don't want in your motel room. Uh, uh -huh. And another time, I swear, I stayed at a haunted motel that was an old, it was an old elementary school converted into a hotel. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I made a deal with myself that I would sleep over the covers in full clothing, and if I heard one child laugh, I was out that day. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this place is haunted. Yeah. So this is like the glitz and glamour of opening on the road. But, yeah. Uh, so I this is the, the comedy clubs. They they arrange this, right? They invite you and then they arrange it, or you gotta pay for yourself. Uh, well, mostly it's independent producers. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have a few guys I work with uh, and their uh, their businesses, and uh, they bring you up. So accommodations are paid for, but they will give you the cheapest accommodations yeah. possible, right? Hey. But it makes for better stories, yeah. and uh, you gotta cut your teeth somewhere, and uh, it makes it makes for a funny story around like the Christmas holidays or the dinner table or something. Like yeah. That. So is it a lonely journey though? Because you're out there by yourself. Are you driving? Are you busing? Like, how are you traveling? Usually I would go with a headliner together. Mm -hmm. If you're going with another comedian, you'll travel with them. Uh, it can be pretty uh, arduous. It can be a long, long road, long process. Uh, it's very competitive, right? So you are, you are working your butt off just to get the chance to go on the road, or just to get the chance to open for somebody. But I love it. I mean, I, I absolutely love this, and I wouldn't change it for anything. Yeah. And, um, and You're funny. <laughs> well, thank so, you. Have you always been funny? And then how did you say, okay, I'm funny enough to turn this into a profession? Uh, I think that uh, anyone who tries what I, I'm trying to do, uh, you, you're usually told at parties or by friends, oh, you're funny, man, you're funny. And I always wanted to try it, but I never had the guts. You know what I mean? And I'd go to comedy clubs and I'd ask comedians, how do you do this? How do you do this? And they're like, you just got to try. So I actually had an ex-girlfriend who signed me up for a class, which is my girlfriend again now. Wow. My girlfriend. My <laughs> girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she signed me up for it without telling me about it. Yeah. And then the day before, she's like, oh, you got to go. I already paid for it. And uh, oh. and that's when I met you at Kevin Fox's thing. Wow. Yeah. That is so amazing. Yeah, it was she's a lot of fun. She's definitely a keeper. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. No, it's been great. And the rest is history. Uh, once I started, I just didn't stop. And uh -huh. I knew that's exactly what I want to do for the rest of my life. Oh. So what are your parents uh, saying about it? <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> they uh, are surprisingly okay with it. They really? are super supportive. Uh -huh. uh, my parents are the two of the best people I could ever imagine. And uh, they have been nothing but supportive. Mm -hmm. They come to a, a bunch of shows, uh -huh. and even though they've heard my jokes, and they laugh like this is the first time they heard them. Uh -huh. And my mom just, oh. She just gushes about it. Oh, <laughs> so it's man. It's almost embarrassing. But do you have to, like, switch things when you know your parents in the, uh, in the audience? How challenging is that? <laughs> Absolutely, you know? yeah. yeah. At the beginning, I didn't, and then that made uh, family dinners a little awkward. Oh. <laughs> right? But now, uh, you just... Uh, you, I, I, everyone strives to be as clean as possible anyways. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you want to get on TV, you got to learn to adjust and adapt and stuff like that. Uh, I'm speaking like a veteran, but again, I'm, I'm very humble and new and uh, just trying to learn as I go here. 
<laughs> Thank you for being here. So we're just going to take a short break, and then we're going to come back and keep talking to you about uh, what's happening. <laughs> Thank you for being you here. You and I talk show with Louise Uachu. We love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people. Please contact info at uachu.com to be a guest on the show. All right, we're back, my people, still talking to Justin Nicol. So, I also saw pictures on, um, oh, no. on Facebook. And I saw a post that you kind of got married. <laughs> huh? Uh, What's that? Little, What's that? What's that? That's What's a little that? complicated. And then, and then you didn't just get married with anybody. You got married to... Kevin Fox, okay. who is your teacher, <laughs> and there's a lot of inappropriate, like, like right. you know, the whole teacher-student thing. Kind of a big story in there, uh -huh. <laughs> and it was, uh, it happened to be on Pride Weekend. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay, okay. <laughs> that makes it sound yeah. even more convincing. Uh, Kevin is a, a mentor of mine mm -hmm. in comedy. He's mm -hmm. been great. He's a 25-year veteran in comedy. Yeah. He's an amazing guy, and uh, we have this little back and forth going on Facebook, right? And he kept posting these surveys about like who has a crush on you and who has this. And I kept coming up, so I As thought it would the be the person who has yeah, a crush on I, him. Come on, <laughs> come on, Kevin, get over yourself. You know what I mean? So uh, I thought it would be funny to one up him, uh -huh. and because uh, the announcements on Facebook always make me laugh or yeah. whatever, so I announced that me and Kevin are now officially engaged. Oh my god! The goodness. funny thing was he got like 180 likes yeah. and like 80 comments. So I felt kind of bad. I almost <laughs> felt bad that it wasn't true. But uh, Kevin's great. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know. I but don't know. how is he handling it? He may have taken it seriously. <laughs> he's, uh, <laughs> he's been all right. We had a stern talking to. Uh -huh. he's, he's the jealous type. Okay. So, yeah. you, do, you, you had to tell him you do realize that this is just on Facebook. Yeah, it was okay. just a joke. Uh -huh. I let him down easy. Okay. I let him yes. down easy. Otherwise. He's been great. He's a great cook, though. Yeah. So ladies out there, please okay. look up Kevin Fox. <laughs> <laughs> All the crazy ones, please look them up. Yeah, it's great. So, um, apart from uh, comedy, do you have any other passions? Like when you're not doing comedy, are you always writing and preparing for comedy? Yeah, actually, uh, glad you asked that. I've actually learned to start writing a lot more in other ways. Like you, we were just talking about sketch comedy and uh, things like that. Um, my goal is to eventually maybe get a project going with other comedians to do like a, almost like a weekend update, but sports-wise, where all the comedians can bring material to the table and it's like an ongoing kind of uh, project. Mm -hmm. I think that would be great. Um, also, I love sports, anything to do with sports. Um, I used to volunteer and coach kids in sports. Uh, it's a huge, huge uh, honor to be able to do that sort of stuff with kids and uh -huh. be an impact on their life, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so as soon as things die down a little bit, I think with how busy I am right now, I'd love to get back into volunteering mm -hmm. and that sort of stuff. And you're also like a big sports fan. Huge. I also all the time see you posting and getting <laughs> in fights about sports. <laughs> <laughs> Not if I, I just like to defend the Canucks because okay. people are so So mean. you're a Canucks fan. I'm a huge Canucks fan, ah. absolutely. But it's so hard to defend the Canucks. It is Canucks. very hard. People who Oh, no, this is the Vancouver team, okay? It is hard. It is very hard at times. They don't give me much of a chance to yeah. defend them, but they're my team. Uh -huh. And you know what? If your kid was on a sports team, right, and they started losing, would you start booing your, t your kid's sports team? I don't think so. I, I grew up here. I love this city, uh -huh. and uh, the Canucks represent our city, mm -hmm. and I will always support them, always. So the people who don't support the Canucks, or who support them only when they're winning. I think they're just having like a bad a day. Fake, uh, <laughs> fake, fake Canucks fans. Yeah, they're fake fans. And you know what? It's just easy. I think it's like the cool thing to do uh -huh. to like yeah, criticize and hate on things. And you know what? A team is supposed to bring a community together. You know what I mean? We're supposed to rally behind something, a cause, if you will. Yeah. And I think it's it's just a shame that we aren't able to do that here. And such. I think it's just because we're such a big city. You know? Okay. I don't really know what the reason is. So you're not doing this for the party, you know, because when the Canucks <laughs> are playing, it's a huge party in town. I mean, it's like, I don't know. I'm under the impression that some of the Canucks fans are just fans for the party. Okay, well, I'm about 80% party fan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I can still support my team very heavily, uh -huh. very heavily. Uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. I've learned now to just make jokes out of it, not mm -hmm. take it personal. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the end of the day, I mean, the Canucks, they go home and go to sleep if they win or lose, so... It's nothing to get too crazy about. Uh -huh. But I try to turn that into comedy now and, and uh, use it as a joke. Yeah. And then um, they also had that event where they had the riots. <laughs> right. I know that Kevin, you know, Kevin was joking with you. Yeah. Um, that 
he, he accused you of looking like somebody <laughs> who was in the riot. Yeah. I know you can't say anything. Oh, no, no. I was not. When uh, big games happen, okay. I have to be shut in alone. I can't be around anyone because I get pretty intense and I can enjoy the game and see okay. the replays. Uh -huh. But that riot was, it was a bit outrageous. I don't know if we should call it a riot, uh -huh. though. It was more of like a three-hour like, party, <laughs> you know what I mean, in the street. Because, like, riots, when riots happen, like, I think uh, London had a riot that lasted two weeks. France, they know how to riot. Yeah, oh, yeah, but yeah, in, yeah. In Vancouver, we're the only place where you riot, and then everyone who riots forms a single file line to get on the sky train to go home. You know what I mean? Like, we, <laughs> we, we break things in our city, and then we're polite enough to, like, wait in line and be like, oh, don't budge. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, people get really mad if you budge in line. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's so Vancouver of us. Yeah, I just so that was funny. just, like, kids getting overexcited. I, yeah, I pretty suppose. much, and being congested, and then add add booze to the mix, and, yeah. uh, and that's never a good thing, so... Uh -huh. I uh, I like to enjoy my sports and then maybe maybe go out afterwards. So know? is this like because you're too nervous that your team may yeah. lose and then you don't want to cry in front of? Hundred percent. <laughs> I'm a grown man and I cried over sports. <laughs> Absolutely, Louise. Yeah. But you know that's mean that's when you're enjoying it. Yeah. That's when you're enjoying it. So <sighs> yeah, I'm a bit of a shut in for the big games. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so we're gonna take a, a short break again and then when we come back, you can tell people where you're playing, cool. what's going on. And if where they can find you, in case you have like awesome. crazy fans who are trying to awesome. find you. Because you know you're looking so good today. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. We'll be right back. <laughs> you and I talk show with Luis Uachu. We love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people. Please contact info at uachu.com to be a guest on the show. All right, my people, we're back. This is our last segment with Justin. So, what do you, what do you, are you going to the States? Like, where do you see the comedy thing going? Ultimately, what's the big uh, dream? Well, uh, like many amateur comedians, uh, basically, I'm just doing the grind. You're right a pro now. right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, basically, it, uh, it's just to get as many shows in as possible every mm -hmm. week. Mm -hmm. uh, my goal is to get six shows in a week and uh, build towards tomorrow and tomorrow never seems to come but that's just the way it goes right and who's uh, the big name in comedy that has inspired you one of those old timers that really you know i would say right now i really enjoy bill burr mm -hmm. uh, i really enjoy jim jeffries i love how they are able to they're able to take something uh, that they're really passionate about and uh, express it and make it hilarious. And that, does, that does, seems easy to say, but when you're trying to take something you feel passionate about, maybe even angry about, yeah. and make that funny, it takes a long time. It yeah. takes a long time to master that, you uh -huh. know what I mean? So uh, I'm just, again, trying to get as many shows as I can on the road. Uh, going on the road is really tough and it makes you a lot better because you're in front of really ha harsh crowds. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? People yeah. maybe don't want to laugh or don't know much about comedy. They're just there to, be there, you yeah. know what I mean, because it's a small town or something. Um, but uh, other than that, uh, I'm uh, doing a lot of shows at Yuck Yucks in Vancouver coming up, uh, and I have a uh, bit of a project going on. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to tell you <laughs> yet. <laughs> we'll preview it, though. Uh, there's uh, hopefully a, a reoccurring comedy show going on at Starlight Casino hmm. uh, in New Westminster, and hopefully expanding to Gateway Casinos. Well, we hope that it happens because we'll have already promoted them on TV, right? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's, it's, it's great publicity if Absolutely. it's already happening. I hope I'm so allowed to say it. I you, to yeah, say let's it. let's make it happen so then people can come and check you out at the casinos. Absolutely. Right? Oh, wow. That would be wow, You get free tickets. <laughs> oh, I'll be there. All right. And, and so what about the old timers, the old timer comedians? Anybody in the old days, dead or alive, that uh, used to make you like... Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, you know what? Uh, when I first started doing comedy, I was told that was the first thing to do. Look at the old timers like Richard Pryor, and uh, you know, there's so many, it's hard to explain. I mean, Robin Williams was great. Uh, I learned a lot of different things from Robin Williams as far as the physical humor goes. Uh, he's one, in a, one of a kind and unique in that sense. Um, but Richard Pryor was just so ahead of his time with his content, saying stuff that you were never even imagined you'd be allowed to say on TV. So, mm. guys like that, right now, it. Uh, I'm really into Bill Burr, though. I would recommend him to anyone if you can if you can handle a little bit of swearing. <laughs> uh, I think he's great. Nice. He's amazing. So usually comedians have like a 
weird childhood. <laughs> yeah. You seem to have normal parents. I, are, are they wondering, like, what did we do? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was a middle child, okay. right? And middle okay, children okay. are kind of messed up all the time. Okay. Because the oldest one is always in trouble and the littlest one gets all the attention, right? Yeah. So, so you're there lost. Yeah, like, yeah, man. Nobody. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, like, I've been, oh, I could run down the list of times I've been left somewhere by my parents. <laughs> they were great parents. They, <laughs> they loved me a lot. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, three kids is a lot, and uh, the squeaky wheel gets the grease, and I was a pretty quiet kid. Uh huh. But I was very loved, so I had a, I had a great childhood. So you're making up for that lack of attention. <laughs> I think by, so. By I this think time, doing the stand up. <laughs> now everybody has to watch. Everyone it. look at me. Yeah. Everyone look at me and laugh. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. That's a, I didn't even think of it like that. Oh, nice. Thank you. I'm going to write a joke book. <laughs> I appreciate that. Just write my jokes for me. So what about uh, like your girlfriend? Mm -hmm. If you make fan uh, of your relationship, and then people may think, or girls may think that you're single, right. and they come on to you, or how does she feel about it? Uh, well, I wish it uh, went like that. It doesn't really go <laughs> like that at all, no. I, uh, I, did, I did make jokes. I think you heard a couple at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, and the... Uh, it, it, she wasn't upset about it, but I don't think the jokes were that good. Uh -huh. So you know what I mean? So it was easy to let them go. Uh, girls don't really come up to me too, too much. After shows, there's always some big headliner or some other cute 21-year-old oh. for them to go focus their okay. attention on. Yeah. So comedians don't get a... Because, you know, we had musicians uh, before on the show, and, you know, musicians get that attention. <laughs> right. Well, I'm also just trying not to get in trouble, too, okay, and okay, tell okay. you all <laughs> 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 no, but it's, it's great. Like, uh, one of the best parts about doing a comedy show is, uh, you, you know, you go to work all day and then you, you travel an hour and a half to get to a show and you wait an hour to get on and you get on for five minutes, <sighs> right? Five minutes. So it's only, it's very short, but when yeah. people come up to you afterwards to tell you how funny they thought you yeah. were, I mean, that's the icing on the cake right there. You're like, thank you so much. Nice. Like, I really appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. And so the pressure of putting your funny and being laughed in five minutes. It's tough. How, how, how do you do that? Well, it's uh, the way you, you gotta cut your teeth. It's the, the only amount of time you get to prove that you're funny, so you have to figure it out, kind of. And you're not that funny at first when you start, and you have to persevere through that. You have to know you're gonna get better. Yeah. And uh, right now, uh, I'm trying to keep telling myself, I'm gonna get better, <laughs> I'm gonna get better. <laughs> so it's great though, it's been an unbelievable uh, road so far, and uh, I just love every day of it. <sighs> Justin, thank you so much for being here. It's short. We're coming to the end. Right. I want to congratulate you on how you dressed up so <laughs> nice. I mean, is this how you show up to your your your, your comedy? You look uh, like a business guy right now. Uh, maybe not the the blazer. I usually save that for my court hearings, but I'm. Just <laughs> But, uh, You're not guilty today. No, not guilty. Okay, yeah. But uh, yeah, no, I'm trying to. I'm trying to take a more a professional approach. Yeah, you look really nice. Thank you so much. And, 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 and thank you. This is, uh, you know, you're definitely ready for late night television. Well, if she says so, then I guess I am. Everyone listening out there, hopefully, <laughs> Louise is my new manager. You know. Uh, <laughs> let's it. do it. <laughs> thank you so much thank for having so me. Good. I appreciate it. <sighs> my people, so that's it. Justin, so funny. Check him out in Vancouver, and hopefully he'll be doing the big casino thing. So let's uh, keep in touch with that. Thank you for being here. Tune in next time. <laughs>